Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a little bit different of a video. Now you all know that we've been talking a lot on this channel about ways that you can save money to help your family with your budget, just to be a little more frugal. And you know, honestly, we've been studying because we homeschool, we've been studying in history, US history this year, and all the way back like World War II, the Great Depression, like all of the things. Um, and so history repeats itself. Now I'm not a conspiracy theorist. That is not what this is about, but we should, I believe, always be prepared for anything to happen for history, history to repeat itself. And the rate our economy is going, if things don't change soon, I fear we could possibly be headed for another depression. So if history should repeat itself, which I hope it doesn't, I hope we're okay, but I'm just rather, I would be ready, rather be prepared and not scared than to not prepare and then get in the situation where it's panic and chaos ensues. So we're gonna talk today about 20 tips that can help you not just survive, but maybe thrive through tough times. And it may not be a depression like in the country. It may be a tough time just in your family's life a sickness, a loss of a job, you know, a death in the family, whatever. I mean, life happens to all of us, right? So maybe you need to cut your budget as far back as you possibly can to survive. Maybe um, there has been a horrible um, catastrophe like a tornado or a hurricane and you have no power um, that's beyond your control. Whatever the scenario, hopefully these tips can help you to prepare ahead of time before that happens so that when you're in it, you feel like you can survive it. So tip number one is, I have my list over here I'm looking at, learn to live without electric light. Okay, we do a lot of this at home. I have mine on now, you can see it in the mirror right there, just so you can see. But the mirror, the window in front of me is open. We have a lot of big windows in this house. I rarely turn the lights on in the house during the day, unless I'm filming for you guys and you kind of see. So just to give you an idea, if I turn this light off, it's dark, but I can totally see in here. I don't, it's not hurting my eyes. My eyes are not straining. In fact, that light hurts my eyes. So I prefer the light off. So if you can kind of get in a habit of doing things, doing your daily chores, your laundry, whatever it is, sweeping, whatever, during the day, if you can get by with just natural light from the windows, then great, you're saving on electricity. And if you should be in a position where there's no power, then you're already used to doing that. So get them all done before the sun goes down. And then after the sun goes down, if you have plenty of candles you can stock up on, which I do, I love candles, battery operated flashlights, battery operated lights, battery operated candles, then you're good to go for light. Probably an obvious one, but tip number two is gonna be cook from home. Use your kitchen, you have one, use it, utilize it. Cooking from home is gonna be a huge, budget friendly option rather than eating out all the time. And I understand that is not for everyone. I understand everyone's lifestyles are differently. Please don't come at me in the comments. I'm just trying to help those who these tips can help. That's why I'm putting them out there. If this tip cannot help you, then it's not for you. So if you cook at home, grab a recipe book. I have one, this is mine. I write recipes in it. If we find a recipe and we like it, I write it in here. One day this will be Bailey's or Colson's or Colson's wife or whoever wants it. They can photocopy it, they can have it. I write it down, I try it. If I wanna tweak it, I'll tweak it like we like it. And then if we like it, it goes in that book. And then I have recipes that I know are easy, time-saving, budget-friendly, and it's easier to cook from home if you have a fully stocked pantry and then you can just pull flour, sugar, butter, eggs, oats, all the things, rice from your pantry, and then just whip up a meal here at home rather than getting takeout every night. But then also, if you do not already have one, I would recommend highly putting a little bit of an investment into like a pressure cooker of some sort, like an instant pot. Those make cooking dinner a whole lot faster and they use way less energy in your home on your bill than heating an oven or a stove top for hours when the pressure cooker draws less energy and it does it in a fraction of the time. Tip number three is to stay warm. Ugh. In our house, we love 
blankets. Love them. Well, except Jason. He's very hot natured. The kids and I love blankets. You can never have too many blankets. And in this house, I don't even I, One day I have to count because we have blankets galore in this house. If you have plenty of blankets, we have throws all over the living room for just watching TV. I have this huge, this is my great book, great big family size 10 foot blanket that I got from Costco for 20 bucks. I have one and Bailey has one. This I got on the Walmart clearance aisle for $8. It is a twin size comforter and it is like a t-shirt material and I've had it like, I don't know, probably 10 years. And of course, if you have plenty of things like hoodies, who doesn't love a hoodie, right? Comfy, cozy, wear around the house, fluffy robes, fluffy house shoes. The reason I'm saying this is in the winter, you can cut your cost by turning your heat way down in the winter which my husband loves just because he's hot natured. But that will save you a lot of money as long as you have plenty of warm clothing and warm blankets, you can stay warm. Also, should you have a power outage and you have no heat from like an ice storm, better be sure you have plenty of blankets. Tip number four, grow some food. I'm not saying that you have to grow all of your food. If you have the space and the ability to do that, great. We don't, we have a very small yard and we can't plant in the dirt because the gophers and the moles pull the plants from underneath and they're just gone. So over here, we've got two tomato plants that are starting to bud. We've got some lavender, some dill. This is cucumbers. I've got basil, oregano, sage, and okra back here. So we've got this growing. So that's something. Now you don't have to grow all of your food, but even a little bit helps. That's just that much less I have to buy at the store. For example, I would much rather go right out there and pull a tomato off the vine than go to the grocery store. I bought this yesterday afternoon. So it has been less than 24 hours and it's already starting to go bad. I'm wasting money. So I'd much rather just go right out there and pick it when I need it, bring it in here and eat it fresh than to go buy almost halfway bad ones at the store and then within a day, I'm tossing them out. So this is getting used for supper tonight. And then if you have extra, share, help other people out. Tip number five is gonna be learn to preserve your own food if you don't know how. If you do, then great, you already have that skill. So whether you have your own garden and you're growing it and you wanna preserve it for your own family, or you just want to preserve what you've just bought at the store before it goes bad, like that tomato. If you can or dehydrate your things, then it will last you a whole lot longer and you can sell, store them in your pantry for when you do need them. Now, like I said, I've never canned anything before, but my mom does all the time. So I wish she would make a YouTube video showing you what all she's canned because you would be amazed. But here's some things I'm lucky she shares with us. Here is a quart of some blackberries that she can. And I hate that I forgot that they were in here before I made that blackberry cake for her. I would have used these instead of some from the store because these would have been better. Blackberries, she's also made strawberry jam. There's a whole thing over here, right here, of jams and things that she has canned and been kind enough to share with us. So that's something else that you can do to save money. Okay, so how about um, tip number six? Maybe start now earning a little bit of extra cash if you can. Remember, during the Great Depression, we learned about in school this year that women would do things like they would take in people's washing or people's ironing or people's mending for to earn a little bit of extra cash on the side to help their family. What are some skills that you have that you could implement to try and put back a little bit of cash every so often now so that when something happens and inevitably something is going to happen if you live long enough you've got some cash stored away to kind of help you through those tough times let's see do you know how to play the piano do you know how to sew do you know how to um, work on cars can you use some of those skills to offer to teach a class to maybe some homeschoolers or homeschool co-op group that you could they could pay you to do art lessons or or whatever could you rent out your room or a basement to someone in need um what are some things that you do? Jason and I have been door dashing. Right now, people are still door dashing things because they can't. 
it might get to a point where they can't afford to door dash things and have to go get it themselves. But for right now they are. So Jason and I go out and we door dash and save that money and put it aside. So if we need it, or if it's tough time, hey, at least we had that DoorDash money to help us get us through, right? What are some things that you can do to put back a little bit of extra cash now to save it for later? Tip number seven is gonna be get to know your neighbors if you don't already. I know my neighbors on this side of me and I've met the guy on the other side of me once or twice. Um, he works a lot, so he's hardly ever home. Um, but they are just the sweetest couple ever. Now they have chickens, so we, are growing vegetables. So if our vegetables ever come in, their chickens will be about to the age where they start laying. Maybe we could trade off and help each other out. Um, otherwise, how, what are other ways that you can um, get to know your neighbors? Why would you need to know your neighbors to help you out in, during tough times? Well, back a long time ago, people depended on their neighbors like family. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? Can I let my kid come hang out at your house for a few minutes? Well, can you watch my child after school for me until I can get home from work? You know, when we were little, my mom would, we would carpool with the neighbors next door to school. Like one week, my mom would drive me and my sister and the next door neighbor's kid to school and back for a week. And then the next week, we would ride with the next door neighbors to school and back for the week. So it saved everybody gas. So you could do something like that. What if your neighbor has knowledge of how to fix a certain thing that you don't and you could call on them to help you rather than paying a repairman? What if your neighbor has a tool for a certain project that you need and they don't mind you borrowing it because you know them, you have a relationship with them versus you having to go to a hardware store and buy a very expensive tool. All of these things, get to know your neighbors, help each other out, be a community. Tip number eight is gonna be some stash, some cash away where you can get to it easily should you need it. So back in the depression, people probably had some money, but it was in their bank account and then if you remember history correctly, the banks were shut down. They couldn't get to their money. So it is important to have some cash somewhere in a safe spot for you to be able to get to it. So something along the lines of this, like a fireproof like case that's a safe um, that you probably maybe already have in your home to put like documents in that you don't want to um, get stolen or to burn in a house fire should you have one start sticking a little bit of cash here and there if you're doing odd jobs or selling some produce that you've grown or chicken eggs or whatever you might have then start sticking some cash away so that in the event of an emergency situation or a tough time you have cash that you can get your hands on okay tip number nine is going to be start to build up a set of emergency supplies such as a prepper pantry now if you've been with my channel for any length of time you already know about my prepper pantry that i have like video tours of it, um, how I set it up. You can go look at those videos, but think about it. If times get bad enough, whether it's in your personal life or the country as a whole, what if there's a time where you can't afford to go to the grocery store to buy a certain ingredient or the gas to get there and back? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just walk into a room and say, here it is, and pick it up off the shelf and then go make dinner? So what little bit can you start with now purchasing a little bit at a time? I'm not saying go buy this in all one grocery trip or two grocery trips. A little bit at a time. These cans of tomatoes are on sale this week. Let me get three extra cans. I have this dressing on sale for a dollar. Let me grab five of them. Five's the limit. And start stocking it up so that when times come, you're ready. Tip number 10 is going to be why don't you start now stocking up on a few of what we call comfort items. Those are items that you do not need, technically need, to live. You don't have to have them to survive. They just help make life a little bit more comfortable. And when you're in a stressful situation, whether it's a national depression, a horrible time during your life, just having a couple of those little comfort items will just go a long way with your mental health and to help you be able to get through times. Maybe that's your favorite tea bags to sit down at night and relax and have a cup of soothing hot tea. Maybe it's your favorite bubble bath that's maybe a little bit on the expensive side, but you catch it when they have a big blowout clearance sale and you can grab a bottle or two and stuff, shove it away for when you want it later. Maybe it's a pack of chewing gum. Is chewing gum necessary? No, but I know I like to have it in my purse. Different things like that. Candy bar, what is your go-to comfort item that you might like to have on hand during those stressful times that you wanna say, oh, I just really wish I could have the Snickers bar, but I don't have the money for that. Just go grab one out of it. But the trick is, 
to leave it there and not use it. <laughs> Tip number 11, line dry your clothes, if at all possible. I did this thing, it's like a, it's got a, um, like a pipe up here and I can show you in my laundry room redo video. If you go look that up, I will link it in the description box down below where you can just hang stuff on a hanger and then just hang it up here straight from the washing machine or whatever and line dry them or coming out of the dryer, hang it straight up so it doesn't wrinkle, but try to line dry as much as you can so that you're not running the dryer any more than is absolutely necessary. And I know my family likes to just mm, leave it in the dryer and then the next day I go, oh, now they're wrinkled, I have to turn it back on and let them fluff up before I can get them out. Now I'm running the dryer twice. I really, really want a clothesline in the backyard. I have to convince Jason to help me build one. Comment down below and tell him that I want a, a clothesline. Not only is line drying your clothes gonna be less energy that you're paying on your electric bill because of less clothes dryer running time, but also it's gonna preserve your clothes. It's not gonna pill as much, they're not gonna fade as fast, they're not gonna shrink, and your clothes will last you longer, therefore not having to buy new clothes more often. Tip number 12, you can thank my daddy for because this is his idea. He did it when we were little and he would probably still do it today if he could get on the roof. I've told Jason, Jason's a said no, is put a sprinkler on the roof because it mimics rain. And the water bill is cheaper than an electricity bill. So what happens when it rains? Your house cools down, right? So if your house is cooling down, is your air unit having to run as much? No. So you're saving electricity by trying to cool your whole house. Whereas if you would just wet the roof down pretty good, that'll help. I think there was one summer we hardly ran the air conditioner at all. It's worth a shot. Tip number 13, repurpose old things instead of throwing them away if you can. For example, you have any old blankets that are starting to fray around the edges. Maybe they have a couple of holes in them. Either if you have a dog, now they're the dog's blanket. Or roll them up and stick them under the door jam, all your door jams in the winter to keep some drafts down. We do that. Or in all of your window sills. That has helped a lot too. Maybe that. Or cut them up. Like this is an old bath towel. You see how it's torn? You could cut them up. I cut this one to make a rag out of it. This is a little piece that I used for staining. I think I stained the wood in the laundry room redo. Don't throw the towels away. They're the dog's bath towels now or cut up for rags or whatever you need them for. Also, food containers like this, like you see me buy these at Sam's all the time. Don't throw these away. These are now your leftover containers. I took, I made turkey salad not long ago and our preacher's wife really likes it. So I had an empty one of these. I filled it up with turkey salad, took it to her and she doesn't have to bring me my container back. Don't throw away those perfectly good containers. What about glass jars and cans, right? I'm saving our glass jars from sweet pickles or jelly jars or spaghetti sauce jars, cans like this, why? because Bailey has a 16th birthday party next spring and I'm starting now. These are gonna be repurposed into table decorations. So stay tuned for future videos on that. Number 14, take a cue from grandmother and wear an apron. Why do you think women in the early 1900s, 1800s, really up until recently, well, if you're me, yesterday, why do you think we wear aprons? What is the purpose of an apron? It's to preserve your clothes. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a lot of clothes because we can't afford to go out and just shop all the time. So I have just enough clothes to get me basically a week and that's it. So I cannot afford to be cooking and get grease on my clothes that won't wash out or stains like tomato stains or grape stains that will not wash out. I don't want to splash bleach on my clothes. So I have lots of aprons and some of them I bought and some of them were given to me as gifts and I wear them all, and you'll see on all my cooking videos, pretty much, I'm in an apron. And even if I'm not cooking and I'm just around the house cleaning, nine times out of 10, I've got an apron on to protect what clothes I do have. Tip number 15 is make the switch to cloth. Cloth what? Well, in my case, we have switched from paper napkins or using paper towels as napkins when we eat meals to cloth napkins. I have this whole Rubbermaid container that was all those um, 
plasticware like containers that I bought, I think at Sam's when it was on sale, super cheap. Well, I didn't throw this container away. It stays in the closet on the shelf, just like this. And it is full of nothing but cloth napkins. Now I've bought some of these. My mother-in-law has been kind. She likes to go to like home goods and places like that. And she'll see some and she asked me what colors and I told her I didn't care because what difference does it make what color it is? We're going to wipe our mouths on it. So if she finds some on clearance, she'll grab me a pack. She's gotten me a pack of 12, a pack of six. There's a whole bunch of them in here and we wash them because we also use placemats and we use tablecloths and my aprons and dish towels and all these other things. So those all go in one big load together. If I'm washing those things anyway, I can throw these in with it. No problem. I haven't bought paper napkins in over two years. Well, I take that back. I have bought them for specific things. Like when my whole family is here and we're doing Christmas, I will get some like paper Christmassy napkins just to be festive and fun. And it's just easier to just throw them away. But at the rate I'm going, I might have enough napkins for everybody to use these next year. But you could do cloth napkins. You could do cloth like towels. Like I keep a dish towel seat right here hanging on my um, stove oven at all times. That is what I use for my hand towel when I'm washing my hands at the sink. I don't use paper towels to dry my hands anymore in the kitchen or in the bathroom even. Um, so you could switch to that. You could switch to the little like cloth, um, like we use circle rounds, Bailey and I do to wash our face at night. They make some that are cloth that you can just reuse and wash them. You could use switch to cloth of those. Feminine products you could switch to, um, non-disposable diapers if you have babies. I know that's a lot of hassle, but if you really need to pinch pennies, that might be a way to do it. So switch to cloth. Tip number 16 is to have a frugally stocked pantry. What does that mean? Well, I just did a video on that. So look in the description box down below for a link to that video. So I won't go into that again. You can go watch that video frugally stock your pantry. Number 17 is going to be try to DIY and make your own cleaning products as much as you possibly can. I've got a whole playlist, a DIY playlist. I will link that in the description box down below as well, where you can find things like homemade bleach. I've been using it, love it in the laundry. Homemade Febreze fabric refresher. What about homemade um, dishwasher pods or um, the carpet refresher, laundry detergent, fabric softener, all the things, right? Go check that playlist out. Tip number 18 might be a little bit more obvious, but drink more water instead of things like sodas, teas, juices. Juices are expensive. So the only juice we really keep on hand is grape juice. In the event that someone in our family gets a stomach virus or we were exposed to someone out there that we know for sure has a stomach virus, we all drink grape juice to keep from getting it. It works, trust me. We keep that in the pantry just in case, not just to have. And then orange juice on occasion, if it's cheap, if it's on sale, I get a really good deal on it just during the winter months to kind of help load up on a little bit of vitamin C just to kind of prevent colds and flus. Other than that, we really don't drink a lot of juice and sodas. You see like on my grocery trip this last time, I only got them because they were on the weekly digital deal and I try to get them and stock up for when we have events like family Christmas or we have a get together, then I can pull those drinks out because I got them at a lower price. Other than that, we try to drink a lot of water here, especially in here in the South, it gets hot in the summer and you need to rehydrate. It's better for you and it's a whole lot less expensive. Tip number 19 is gonna be exercise for free. Ditch your gym membership, quit paying for it and just exercise throughout everyday activities. These stairs right here about kill me because I am up and down these stairs at least 20 to 25 times every single day. If that's not a stair master, then I don't know what is. But you can also do things like mow the yard, gardening, cleaning chores around the house, vacuuming, dusting, mopping. That wears me out. You could um, walk to the store if you're close enough. If you live close enough to the store and you're only going to go grab a couple things, saves you gas and you get your exercise, right? What about if you're driving to the store, park in the furthest parking spot that you possibly can and walk those extra steps into the store and back. There's lots of things that you can do to get your exercise in and get other things, tasks accomplished at the same time. So did your gym membership, you can exercise at home for free. And the last tip, tip number 20 that I have for you today is try to fix something that's broken if you, if you can, if you know how, if you have the parts, if you have the tools that you need, if you can fix it, fix it. 
instead of just throwing it away and having to go and buy a brand new whatever it is. Whether it's your washing machine, maybe the part's $100, but $100 might be a whole lot less than buying a brand new machine or a part for your vehicle. If you know how to do it and you have the tools and you can get to where that is located in your vehicle, then do that. Refrigerator, a watch, anything. If it's something that you can fix or sew back together, mend your clothing with sewing, whatever, if you can do that, then do that. That's what they did in the Great Depression. They didn't just go throw it out and buy a new one. They had to fix it because they didn't have any other choice. So if you know now and you start acquiring these skills now, which we have things like YouTube tutorials to teach us how to do things that we may not know how to do. They didn't. They had to figure it out. So aren't you grateful we live in the time that we live in now with all this resource that we have? So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, especially if you got this far. Go check out my merch if you haven't already and like this video, share this video to help other people and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and I appreciate all the love and support and we will see you on the next video. Bye. Love you.